Welcome back to the Daily Decrypt. I apologize for the outage last week. We had a bit of a technical difficulty, but we're back and I'm hoping to put out a few extra episodes just to make up for it. Today, we're gonna to be exploring the network chaos unleashed by macOS 15 Sequoia, which has left users struggling with VPN and antivirus software issues due to broken compatibility. If you've already upgraded to macOS Sequoia, how can you temporarily resolve the network issues without compromising your security? On the other side of the coin, Microsoft's new hot patching for Windows Server 2025 lets you install security updates without any restarts, promising faster installs and fewer disruptions. LinkedIn has temporarily halted its AI data processing in the United Kingdom amid rising privacy concerns following an ICO investigation into their practices, which is highlighting the larger issue of how personal data is leveraged for training AI models without explicit user consent. How is LinkedIn using your data? You're listening to The Daily Decrypt. Users who have recently upgraded to the newest macOS 15 Sequoia have been facing network issues with VPNs and antivirus software. Users are reporting problems with CrowdStrike Falcon, ESET, Endpoint Security, and some VPNs like Molvod. The issue is an incompatibility with new networking structures. You can bring yourself back online if you deactivate these specific tools, but that's not really the solution we're looking for. CrowdStrike and Sentinel-1 have advised against upgrading until they release updates that fully support macOS 15. Apple hasn't made any comments yet, but the issues seem linked to the changes in the operating system's firewall settings. If you use, e there's a quick fix where you can go to system settings and to the filters in your network and remove the ESET network, restart, and you should be good to go, but this only works if you're on the latest version of ESET. If you're dependent on VPNs or EDR security products, it's best to hold off on upgrading for now. But you know, if it ain't one thing, it's the other. CrowdStrike hit Windows. Now OS is hitting CrowdStrike. It's a tough time to be an endpoint protection, but it is hugely important. And I know personally, I don't work in IT myself, but I did receive the notification to upgrade my work MacBook Pro last week to Sequoia and uh, you know, I might hold off or shoot IT an email and I encourage you to do the same just to just to make sure that all the tests have been going well and that they know about this bug. And speaking of updates to operating systems, I love when Mac OS and, and Windows are both in headlines. But Microsoft has just announced a game changer for Windows Server 2025 hot patching, which will let you install security updates without rebooting. So it's patching in-memory code of running processes without any downtime. This is super exciting. It means faster installs, reduced resource usage, and fewer reboots. I know a lot of issues that I have with my endpoints is rebooting can either fix all the issues or show new issues when they fail to boot up again, right? So just reducing the amount of reboots can be good. It can also be bad, but we're focused on the good here, right? But this is all gonna be based around company policies, but now it's possible to do less reboots than the standard 12 per year, right? Once a month, Microsoft was coming out with these patches that forced you to reboot. Now you could maybe do quarterly reboots or annual reboots, though I'd recommend probably sticking to quarterly. The hot patching feature is available through Azure Arc, which is compatible with on-prem, Azure, and other environments supporting Microsoft virtualization-based security standard. So I just learned about this LinkedIn AI thanks to Cybersecurity Girls Real, whom if you don't follow, go to Instagram, follow her, and you know, check out the Daily Decrypt as well. But LinkedIn has halted its AI data processing in the United Kingdom after the Information Commissioner's Office or ICO raised red flags about LinkedIn's use of user data to train AI models without explicit consent, which is crazy that they're using all of your data, pictures, text, whatever LinkedIn has to train their large language models, their AI models. And if you go into your settings under privacy, you will see it ticked on. Now, I don't remember receiving any request to access this data, though I'm sure it came in the form of LinkedIn has updated their privacy policies 
please read these 150 pages that we release a new update to every couple of days just to keep you on your toes. You know, it'd be a full-time job to keep up to date with those. So this is a really shady practice. LinkedIn is already laden with shady practices. So let's just add this one to the tab, right? But if you're listening and you're not in the UK and you don't want your data to be used to train large language models or LinkedIn's AI or whatever, you actually can opt out by going into your settings, privacy settings, and there's actually only a couple of options, so it's pretty easy to find. Just go ahead and turn that off. I already have as well. And you know, while you're in there, take a look at the rest of your privacy settings. Make sure multi-factor authentication is turned on. Maybe give your password a nice reset and check to see what connections and things you've logged into using LinkedIn. Maybe that app from three years ago doesn't still need full access to your LinkedIn profile. Do a little security hygiene while you're in there. And finally, there is a hacktivist group named 12 that is targeting Russian entities with destructive cyber attacks. Love to hear it. Let's break it down. 12 has been active since April of 2023 and uses publicly available tools to encrypt data and then destroy infrastructure with a wiper, causing maximum damage without any financial gain, which is a key characteristic of a hacktivist group. 12's tactics can cripple networks and disrupt business operations, impacting anyone connected to compromised networks. They have been gaining their initial access using valid accounts and remote desktop protocol, and then they exploit contractors' infrastructures using their certificates to access customer VPNs, according to Kasparov. Persky. These hacktivists are using Cobalt Strike, Mimi Cats, and PS Exec for credential theft and network mapping. They're also deploying shells like WSO from GitHub to execute commands and move files. More specifically, 12 has exploited vulnerabilities in VMware vCenter to drop a backdoor called FaceFish using PowerShell to modify Active Directory objects and evade detection. So, I don't think we have too big of an audience in Russia. So if you're listening to this podcast, you're probably not affected by this, but it is just another layer of the war and the conflict in Russia and Ukraine where people from all over the world can actually get involved. Now, I'm not encouraging that in the slightest. This is still technically cyber crime against Russia, but you can get in a lot of trouble for doing this. But that being said, there is a new battlefield in modern day war. And as an uh, army veteran myself, I personally would much rather go to war over cyberspace as an individual than, you know, flying to Russia like the, the, the most recent Trump assassination suspect who flew to Ukraine to kill Russians. You know, it's, 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 a, little, it's a little more tasteful and, and less psychopathic to just wage war on the cyber front. But hey, the Daily Decrypt does not endorse any sort of cyber crime, even against Russia. This has been The Daily Decrypt. If you found your key to unlocking the digital domain, show your support with a rating on Spotify or Apple Podcasts. It truly helps us stand at the frontier of cyber news. Don't forget to connect on Instagram or catch our episodes on YouTube. Until next time, keep your data safe and your curiosity alive.